Hey everybody, it's Becky from First Baptist Church here in Hope, Indiana. I want coming with you to you with another um, children's message. So um, I want to start with some prayer. So if you'll pray with me, God, we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your presence. We thank you that you hear us um, when we speak to you. I just ask that you open our minds and open our hearts that we may hear your word and we will um, know what it is that you have for us to learn and to grow closer to you. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. So I want to start and um, read from my Bible. I brought my Bible with me. If you've got yours, you can open it to Psalm 91. Um, we're just going to look at the last three verses today of Psalm 91. So we're going to start with verse 14. But before I started, um, I really wanted to point out that um, I believe that God gave us this book, that this the Bible is God's holy word, and that every word in the Bible is true. I just thought that was really important to share with you this week. Um, so I wanted to start with that. And then I wanted to read um, the verses we're going to look at today. So in these verses, God is talking to his people. And he says, um, because he loves me, and the he here is us, and the me is God. So because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. I will protect him, for he acknowledges my name. He will call on me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. So, when you're looking there, um, it's talking about how God wants to be with us, right? And so, as I was thinking about that, and I was thinking about um, the news that we've heard lately about um, school being e-learning for the rest of the semester, and they're extending the time that um, parents are, um, some parents are not going back to work, or extending the time when some parents have to be separated from their kids and they're extending that time where we aren't meeting at church and it just seems like a lot of separation and for me that was hard this week because I'm a hugger. I love hugs. I love giving hugs. I love receiving hugs and this continued separation for me was, was sad. Um, and maybe you're feeling that way too. Maybe you're a hugger or maybe you're not a hugger, but there's just a few friends that you really miss seeing. Maybe you miss your teacher. Um, maybe you haven't been able to see your grandparents um, as much and you just have to talk to them on the phone and, um, and Skype. Or maybe you've been doing some porch visits um, where you, you talk to someone from a distance and, and you, and you kind of wave and you do your air hugs. It's not the same, is it? It's just not the same. And that's hard. But I want you to think about something else. You think about how much you love your mom and dad and how much you love your grandparents and your friends and your teachers and your neighbors. And if you were to add all of that up together, all of that love, God loves you more more than all of it. He loves you so much and he wants to give you a hug. And he is waiting for you. He's waiting for you with wide open arms for you to run and spend time with him and just, just soak up his presence. And you may be asking, really? Why? Why does God love me this much? Well, I'll tell you, if you read in the very beginning, in Genesis, it's the very first book of the Bible. And if you read in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, it says that we were made in God's image. It says this, Let us make mankind in our image, in our likeness, so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground. Now, we were made in the image of God. 
that means when it says our there, it means we were made in the image of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Yep, all three. There are so many wonderful words that describe God. And I've made a few of them here, if you see. Um, and I'm going to talk about this just a little bit more at the end. Um, but there are so many characteristics that show um, how God loves us and how we can show God's love to other people. And so um, if we are remembering those, those words in Genesis, we were made to commune with God. We were made to spend time with God. So when we commune, we fellowship. We eat together and we talk together. We spend time with one another. And when Adam and Eve were first created in Genesis in the Garden of Eden, God spent time with them. He walked with them there. So if we flip over to chapter 3, verse 8, um, it says, The man and his wife, it's Adam and Eve, heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. So God spent time in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. And he wants to spend that time with us too. He's always always there. He's always present with us. And we can take him with us when we ride bikes, when we work in the garden, when we're doing e-learning, when we're cooking dinner, all that. When we're writing cards to friends, all that. God is with us. And we can talk to him about things that we're happy about or things that we're angry about. Um, because God really just wants to spend time with us. He wants us to read his words, to sing praises to him, and to pray. And he really wants to, us to acknowledge his name. So if we look back in Psalm 91, that's what it says in verse 14. For he acknowledges my name. He wants us to tell him who we, who he is. And, um... That can be um, a little bit confusing, right? So acknowledging who he is. What, is, what does that look like? So basically, it's three things, right? You um, can read your Bible. So if you have a Bible at home, fantastic. Spend time in it. Because you're going to learn more about who God is and what his plan is by reading the Bible. And if you don't have one, please, please let me know. I'm going to have my email um, at the end of the video and you can email me and I will find a way to get you a Bible. Uh, another opportunity is to go on um, apps. Uh, again, I'll have this listed at the end, but there are some really good apps out there where you can access the Bible on a smartphone or a tablet. So if you have those, um, you can go in there and there's even kids Bibles. There's a really cool app from Uversion where it has um, interactive Bible stories for kids and they're fantastic. So it doesn't matter where you start, just start somewhere and spend time in God's word, learning about who he is and his plan for creation, meaning us. Um, another way then is to sing praises to God. So it doesn't matter if you sing well, it does not matter at all. It only matters that you're singing to God. So I love to sing. I find that a lot of fun and it's great, but not everybody does. And that's okay if you just want to listen to music, but you can listen to it on the radio. There's, um, in our area, it, there's Bridge FM, which is 90.3. Um, I know that there are lots of K-Love stations all around and you can look up K-Love on the computer. On You can Google it and it will tell you what station is in your area. Um, you can do Pandora. We do that a lot. I pull up Pandora and pull up Christian music, but really it's just singing praises back to God, singing scripture back to God. Um, and then another way is prayer. And prayer can sometimes be kind of hard. Um, you don't know what to say, but don't worry. All you have to do is talk to God like he's a friend because he is. He is a friend. And so you just praise his name. And I mentioned the board up here. I put up here all different ways that, uh, all the different things that God means to me, different characteristics. Um, he's our guide. 
He is our refuge. We talked about that the last couple of weeks. He is our stronghold, our fortress. He is our savior. All these different things. You can just pray that and thank him for being who he is. And then just talk to him about your day. Tell him things that you were really excited about. Tell him things that maybe you were frustrated about. Um, ask for help to be um, who he created you to be. Just a conversation with God. So all of these are just ways to spend time with God and just um, get to know him better and to, to learn what it really means to love not only yourself but others and love God. And so what I'd love for you to do is just think about different ways that you can spend more time with God every day. So what's one thing that you can do this week to spend some more time with God? And if you could drop us a note on Facebook or email me, that would be fantastic. We'd love to hear and celebrate with you the ways that you are learning to grow closer to God. Um, and next week, we're going to talk a little bit more about this because I know sometimes it feels like maybe God isn't there. He is. And we'll talk about that, but sometimes it doesn't feel like it. So um, please join us again next week and we'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, but again, I would love to have your feedback on um, getting that hug from God and, and what that feels like and what that's looking like for you right now. So if you'll pray with me, um, I would love that. So let's bow our heads, and close our eyes so we can talk to God. God, we thank you. We thank you that you are so many things, our creator, our, um, our fortress, our high tower. Lord, you guide us and you teach us every day. And we just ask that you help each one who's watching to grow closer to you, to learn a little bit more about you, and to find ways to spend more time with you. Just a little bit every day. And it's amazing how much we can grow. So God, I just thank you and I praise you for your word and that your presence is here with us. In your name we pray. Amen. Thanks, guys.